Okay, welcome. Today we're going to talk about lab scope triggering to capture a stall. And there's a few things I want to cover before we uh, we um, get into this. Uh, first of all, take a screenshot of your schematic. It's real important. It's a little cluttered. I will uh, I'll explain each item. And I just want to talk about lab scope um, usage when we have a, a situation like this. This situation is a very, very abrupt stall very yet very yet very infrequent so we want to think about how we go about this if this car came to us you know what would, what would be uh what, what what you know methodology would we come to first and i say the first thing is we never forget the underlying symptom and that's the fact that this is an abrupt stall and it's and it's very infre infrequent so we're going to use the trigger method this trigger method is set up that when we trigger on a signal when that signal goes away, when the car stalls, the scope stops capturing its waveform. And we freeze the screen and we roll it back and we analyze. As far as um, a situation like this, we never want to negate um, initial checks. We want to uh, use the scan tool, check for DTCs, TSBs. In a case like this, we, we found none. Um, we're hooked up on eight channels here and I will explain each channel. And um, we are at eight test points. As you look at the schematic, you were going to see, you're going to see dashed colored lines. Um, those I want you to disregard. Those, I thought about using them, but those are just random hookups. What we want to avoid is random hookups. Every, every test point we make, we want to make it for a reason because we're looking at something. So just bear that in mind. Um, I thought about whiting them out with a white, uh, uh, a white pen or a white, um, uh, a white out, but this thing is just, messy i don't want you know a jackson pollock painting out of this thing nonetheless so disregard the dash lines if i move a channel if i flip a channel i will tell you if i'm using a clamp or a, a test probe or something but just bear that in mind we are on eight channels um channel a from the scope is going to we're going to be current ramping all the fuel injectors channel b is going to be current ramping all of the ignition coils right there channel c is current ramping the fuel pump Channel uh, D yellow is at the feed side of the ignition switch. That's real important. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, that's the hot feed coming from the underhood fuse box to the input to the ignition switch. Channel purple is the, uh, is the run latch of the ignition switch. That's the run circuit, and it, it's going to feed the fuel pump through PGI main relay too. It is also an ignition feed to the PCM. Very important. Channel E gray is the feed side to ignition coil 4. Channel F orange is the feed side to um, injector for that is orange. Does that look orange? Okay, it is orange. It will, you'll, you'll see it on the scope is orange. The final channel, uh, super important, is burgundy. That is the channel we're going to trigger on. That is going. That is channel H. That is at the crank sensor signal at the PCM. So basically, I want to talk about how I decided to set this up. I thought about. How does a car normally shut off? And I say it shuts off via the ignition switch. So I thought that we got to keep that as part of our, our analysis. We can't negate that. Um, it's high priority along with fuel spark, timing the, correctly, the correct time spark and the, the correct timed injection pulse. Um, I will tell you uh, when a test lead is changing and I will tell you um, if I'm gonna make a flip, we wanna, we wanna create, I will create abrupt stalls in many, many situations, and we're gonna analyze each of them and see where, uh, where, it, where it takes us. So initially, let's get, to the, uh, let's get to the scope and turn it on and take a look how I'm set up. It's, I'm kind of frozen on there. I will get the car running and we will set a trigger. I will shut the scope off and then we'll start the car and take a look at our first, uh, our first situation, which I'm what I'm going to do. Okay, our first situation. What I want to want to kind of emphasize on, and I think it's really important. I thought about it. How does the car shut off normally? Because basically, don't when we turn a car off, isn't aren't we stalling the car? Kind of just like this this situation is. So I want to, I want to, first of all, I want to set the trigger. I will go to trigger on the bottom of the scope and I'll set repeat and I will pick channel H um, on the, I'll do it on the rising slope and we see the yellow diamond. If I can find the yellow diamond, it's not in the sky with Lucy. So it's got to be here. Anyway, feeble attempt at humor. Uh, anyway, there it is. Okay. There is our, there is our trigger. 
Um, the signal from the crank sensor, and that's a high priority input. That'll stay with us for most of the test. I always think if we got a crank signal, might we, we should be using it. Um, if the signal should fail to cross the threshold of the crank signal, and that diamond senses it, the scope will stop the pattern. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Once we stop the pattern, we'll roll it back and analyze it. Um, if this were more of a frequent stall where it did it constantly, I would suggest roll mode. Roll mode is a longer time base. We don't set a trigger, but then again, we'd have to stop the scope, sort of babysit the scope, hit the, the stop by the taskbar and stop it and analyze. In a situation like this, when um, our underlying symptom is a, is a very, very unfrequent uh, stalling, trigger can be our friend. Um, there are certain pitfalls, uh, and we may, we may and we may not run into them, and I'll explain them should we, should we do so. Anyway, right now I'm going to shut the car off normally with the key and put, then put the key in my pocket. So look at the scope, analyze each signal. Let's kind of go through them one more time. Blue is, is current ramping the injectors. Red is uh, current ramping the um, ignition coils. Just want to make sure I'm not upside down on red. I look, I may be upside down. Hang on. No, I'm not. Okay, that's this zoomed in version. Kind of looks familiar. There's our fuel pump. Anyway, that looks familiar. I'm, I'm right side up. I'll keep the scope running. Um, uh, red is the current ramp of the ignition coils. Green is the fuel pump current ramp. Um, yellow is the hot side of the ignition switch. Purple is the output run side of the ignition switch. Gray is feed to the um, ignition coil for power to the coil. And uh, seven is uh, power to the number four injector and eight is the crankshaft. So let me shut it down normally and kind of analyze it. One thing to mention on this, uh, this video will probably be shot in multiple segments. So just bear that in mind. Okay, we stopped the scope and what do we have? Okay, we can analyze our situation. Um, I shut it off normally with the key, the crankshaft was the trigger when it stopped when it stopped seeing a crank signal it uh it it's um it it froze the pattern for us let me get into a right here we can see uh where the car pretty much right here's where the crankshaft stopped um we shut the car off so as you look at your wiring diagram purple would go low which is very understandable yellow's hot we're still hot at the ignition switch we haven't lost that feed right up there uh the way we're wired when you look at your schematic the ignition switch feeds fuse 19 feeds the pgi main main relay to the fuel pump and is a very important ignition feed into the pcm we are not on that particular terminal but nonetheless look at uh look at our situation now we shut it off with the key and the fuel pump goes completely down the ignition on goes down um we got about i'm gonna say a, cr a crankshaft and a half revolution here with the with the pulses and a little bit more on the ignition and then uh the combustion process sort of uh, sort of goes away, and then the crank with inertia, the crank sort of rolls to a to a halt right about here. Anyway, that is um, that is the normal way to um, shut a car off. So we we, we can learn something from that because you never know that could be our problem. We would never negate that ignition switch isn't 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 important. Nonetheless, I will start the scope and I will start the car. We're still triggered on the crankshaft. Okay, now we got a, we're in a situation where we don't know what's causing this stall, and we're gonna we're gonna look at it. We're gonna look at our signals. We're triggered on the crank, and um, we're we're analyzing it, and we're waiting for the car to stall. Looks like it's stalled, and we will uh, shut the key off. Our crank signal failed to meet the threshold of the trigger and the scope stopped. We stopped the scope, we roll back. Okay, we roll back some more and we looks like we got caught in a bit of what I refer to as the Pico gap. And that, that we're gonna get familiar with that term. That, that's not gonna, that's an issue. And I'll talk about that. Um, what I can make with my information, I don't have a lot to work with here because I got caught in what they call the Pico gap and that is not uncommon, okay? What I see is our crank has gone away. Our power to our 
um, ignition coil, so you need to drop about right here, are well, let's see if we have a uh, okay. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna let this ride again. If I were in the shop and did this, I would I would I'm gonna dump this and 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 keep uh keep rolling and wait. I want a better picture. I'm gonna be a little picky, and you should be also. Um, we got caught in the gap, the Pico gap. That does happen. Um, let me start the car, and we'll see what happens and see if we can get a better picture. Yeah, that Pico gap sometimes gets you. I'm on a fairly long time base. I'm on. I'm going to go to 500 milliseconds per division. Sometimes the longer the time base, the more we can mitigate getting caught in that Pico gap. Nonetheless, it does happen, um, and we just kind of have to live with it. It's just the luck, like the roulette wheel in Vegas, it's the luck of the draw. So we're rolling, we're triggering on the crank. We got our signals going across the screen. You know them well, They're, you look at your, uh, your schematic and we have something causing an abrupt stall. And let's see what happens. Okay, looks like we have a stall. The crankshaft didn't meet its requirements. It stopped the scope, just like it's supposed to. We stop and we roll back. Okay, now we got something to, to work with. I like this better. See, if I was in the shop, I would I would get the car running again and just try to analyze something I couldn't work with. This is very, very abrupt. We're, we're shut down abruptly um, on blue, on red. The fuel pump stayed strong. The crank went south pretty abruptly. It sort of went the roller coaster route down. I'll talk about that. Um, our yellow is strong at the ignition switch. Our purple our purple right here our, 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 our i'm sorry that's the color clash our purple is also strong at the ignition switch look at your schematic we stayed latched at the output of the ignition switch we lost spark we lost fuel we lost the crank so um what did we lose as far as also gray and gray and gray as a feed to the ignition coil and um Orange is a feed to the injector. So we have a little d difference there. As we feed the injector, and feed, we have something different there. That, um, that tells us something. Let's go to the schematic and analyze. Okay, where did we lose the power? Where didn't we lose the power? If we notice, we're strong at the coil relay latch. We're strong at the coil. We're strong at the fuel pump. We're strong outside the ignition switch. Where we lose it is our PGI main one relay. We lost it at the injectors. We lost it at the crank sensor. So in a situation like this, we would, we're, we're kind of narrowing in on what our problem may be. Our problem most likely is related to, um, I guess from fuse eight down, look at your schematic, go down, PGI main relay one, down to the, the feed, that input to the PCM. Um, it, and also that, uh, the, um, the, we wouldn't say the ground where the ignition coil relay and the PGI main relay uh, unlatch because we still have our ignition coil feed here. So we kind of deduce that. that. That would not be an area where we'd go. That is um, the little purple arrow. Um, if you follow the PGI main one relay down on its control coil, go straight to the PCM, you'll see that burgundy arrow. That's a connection point. And we'd have to say we did not lose it there because that would unlatch both the ignition coil and the PGI main one relay. So. In a situation like this, we would we would uh, sort of deduce that we were we would, we would narrow in on our, our problem area. So we would change our leads and go into a uh, get more um, um, what's the word? We get more specific in a, in a certain area to the point where we'd narrow down our problem. Anyway, let me uh, end this. This is part one. So this was um. This is a, a stall related issue. We'll continue on part two with this and we'll, we'll, we'll flip some leads around and, um, and talk about it. Thanks a lot for watching.